welcome you into week nine of the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman triumphs on the road over the Mars Hill Lions, 48 to 21. Hello, everyone. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. Mike, uh, yes, it's your eighth straight win over Mars Hill, but this one is absolutely a resume builder as you march toward uh, trying to make the NCAA playoffs. Uh, a win on the road, a win on the road over a team with better than a 500 record. Uh, those are things that the committee looks for, uh, for seeding the playoffs. How important was it to get the job done, but also get the job done in a fashion where you left no doubt? Well, it was important to get the job done. It was the next step in uh, writing the story for this 2019 football team. Uh, we wanted to go over and play together and as best we could have a complete game where he had offense and defense and special teams uh, complement each other. Uh, I thought we did that well for the most part. Uh, it, it was a challenge because they were they are a, a very, very good football team and a very explosive offense and uh, just a great team win all the way around. Uh, a game where you have to contend with uh, one of the top receivers in the country in Craig Rucker. Uh, he did his thing, was targeted, I think it was 23 times, caught 15 passes uh, for 199 yards, but yet your team picks off three passes, forces four turnovers. What did you see out of your defense? Uh, having to contend with a guy that's tough to tackle in a phone booth, uh, but made some stuff happen in spite of it. Well, it was, it was a great effort, and, and uh, you know, it starts up front with those guys, and we had some guys filling in some places, and you know, you rush the passer, rush the passer, rush the passer, uh, that, that, has, that has a wear on you. And those kids didn't give up, and, and we brought linebacker blitzes and uh, to try to force the pocket to squeeze it down and still work on contain. Uh, so you start with those guys up front, linebackers filling in at different positions, playing different positions in different packages uh, and in coverage. Uh, and then you go to the secondary guys, and just very, very proud of the whole defense. and. And the way they responded, uh, you know, we had some things happen, and you're going to get calls that go against you. You got to handle those right. This is uh, this is playoff time, and you got to handle those things right, and not let those bother you. And I, and I thought those kids did that pretty good. And uh, and for what we were going against, uh, and Craig Rucker's going to get hit. There's no question <laughs> about it. And uh, gosh, what he did on that last touchdown, you're going, man. I'm just I'm glad the clock's winding down. And. and uh, but now our, our kids, I thought, represented themselves well. I don't know if there's ever been a single player who has posed more of a problem for Carson Newman over a career. Uh, 38 catches for 590 yards for Craig Rucker. Uh, I don't. Probably glad to see him graduate a little oh, bit. Oh, it's going to be a great time to see him graduate. I'm, hey, he is. He is just a great talent. He's very, very explosive. Uh, you know, he, he's a gifted individual. You've got your own gifted individual, though, in uh, cornerback Desmond Farrell. Right. Uh, he stripped Rucker once for a crucial uh, fumble that kind of helped you bury things in the uh, the third quarter and also picked off a pass. He's up to third on the all-time interceptions list. What have you seen from him maturing and now uh, putting together an All-American caliber campaign? Well, yeah, okay. and it's, it's play, he's more playing with more confidence. Uh, you know, we've got to play the kind of receivers we play. We've got to play them up close. Uh, you can't give those kind of guys 10-yard cushion and then try to break on the route and those kind of things. You've got to challenge them at the line of scrimmage. And uh, that's easy said, but unless a kid's playing with confidence and he's got the back of the coaching staff that, uh, and Dennis is playing that way. And so are some other kids over there. You know, Darius Williams and, and those guys are playing. And, and gosh, Ray Arterbridge, yeah. uh, they're, they're playing heads up and they're playing uh, – with a challenge and taking that on. Ray Arterbridge probably has developed more than any player on that defensive secondary from where he started as a freshman to, yes. I mean, he's, he's got an all-conference caliber campaign going right now. Well, he, he has, and he's grown as a young man and very, very proud of him. Um, Ray's a guy's playing right now like anybody is. Uh, everybody's got some nicks and bruises and things, but gosh, he's a threat on the kickoff return. Uh, he's a threat out there as a defensive back in the secondary. So, you know, Ray stepped his game up in you know, senior, senior year, senior season, and being a great team player. Carson Newman gets the job done on the road over the Mars Hill Lions. 48-21, to we start breaking down the first half after these messages on the Mike Turner Show. You know, between raising a family and working a full-time job, 
I never thought I'd be able to get my degree. But Carson Newman University made it easy. Between online courses and on-campus classes that fit my schedule, I'll have my degree in no time. That's good for me, and it's good for my family. You know, it's never too late to get a world-class education. I'm getting that education at Carson Newman University. Learn more at cn.edu. Back on the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman picks up a 48-21 win over the Mars Hill Lions on the road. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside the Eagles head man, Mike Turner. Mike, a first half where uh, you control things. Score four out of the five times uh, that you touch the football. Game started really inauspiciously. Go minus one, minus one on the first two plays from scrimmage. Uh, but then Derek Evans breaks off a free loop, wheeling 21-yard run to set up the first 50-yard field goal for Carson Newman in 2,555 days. What did you see out of your team uh, f from the outset? Well, we, we uh, obviously didn't execute the first two snaps. <laughs> uh, we did pick up the first down, and I think we got it settled down a little bit, you know, what we wanted to do and how we were going about doing it. There wasn't much of a, of a change of what Mars Hill was doing that what we didn't expect. They were, they were going to be in, you know, maybe a little tweak here and there. Uh, but I thought that, you know, to take the football, I mean, I'm hard-headed. I think every time we get a choice on kickoff, we're going to take the football. I, I think you take it and I think you take it and, and you go plan on going and scoring. I don't know why would you would not think that unless it was something tremendous in the weather mm -hmm. uh, that would dictate that. But I feel like our kids uh, have enough confidence to go take it and score and put points on the board first. and. Hey, you draw first blood, that's the object. Uh, never trailed in the game, built a 10 nothing lead. Mars Hill made it interesting, put together one sustained drive in the first half uh, and looked to be going after a two-for-one situation late uh, in the second quarter, but Demarcus Jones came away uh, with a big interception deep in uh, your own territory to deny that. Uh, how important was that pick uh, to keeping momentum on your side with a two-score game headed into the halftime locker room. Well, it was it was very critical, I and mean, you know, just again, proud of our kids for being in the right spot at the right time. You don't get there by accident. That's by practice. <laughs> that's by preparation. And uh, those kids were heads up. And again, really, I I like the the sense that they have about them about takeaways. And uh, you know, we went four quarters without a turnover. That's another key factor in the game. But. Uh, to deny them there right before the half, yes, that has, that's tremendous about momentum. And you say it takes something special for a player to be in the right place at the right time. I double that when you're picking off a tunnel screen as a safety. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, and, and the way you do that is that you practice against that. All right? You, you, there's no question. Uh, you, you, you put yourself in those situations and practice and team time and and you work in those situations to give the kid a chance to, you certainly don't sit back and catch it on the tunnel screen, brother. You're in trouble then. <laughs> uh, offensively, uh, your team does what it's done pretty much every game on this eight game win streak over Mars Hill, and that's move the ball uh, very efficiently on the ground, and it started with Antonio Wimbush. Uh, record book game for him, he's up to third all time on the all time rushing, rushing yards list, moved past Hugh Rutledge and Brandon Baker. And he moves up to eighth on the rushing touchdowns list with his fifth career three rushing touchdown day. What did you see out of your senior tailback? Well, you know, he's a special young man. Uh, I've said it every week probably since we've been here. Okay? <laughs> and he's a special young man. And, and uh, you know, when he gets rolling, uh, he, like I said yesterday, he's got that gleam in his eye. And when he gets that gleam in his eye, you keep feeding him. Okay? He, he, he was going to make things happen yesterday. How much uh, did your offensive line clearing the way aid in that? Oh, it's tremendous. It's, uh, you know, that was going to be a physical football game from the get-go. Mars Hill's a very physical football team on defense, and uh, you, the only way you, you're going to be successful against them is to match it with the physicality, and, and that's a mindset. That's a mindset. That's a heart set, and our kids responded to that well, and, uh, you know, we have many multiple formations and motions to put ourselves in that position and pick uh, the best place we thought to attack at, and they handle that well. Carson Newman gets the win over Mars Hill, 48-21. to Eagles were up 20-7 to at the halftime break. We take a look at those first half highlights.
set wide side to the left with Kelly and Westfield split that way. Evans takes, toss to the right side, Wimbush. Wimbush has a seam. He's across midfield in the 40. Wimbush in a foot weight race along the right sideline. He's tripped up inside the 25, down at the 20-yard line. Jaden King saves the touchdown by forcing Wimbush to cut back, but still he rattles off a 35-yard run to move the chain. Evans looks to the sideline to get a change in. 15 on the play clock, loads of time. Evans takes, quarterback sneak, Evans goes in untouched. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Career score number 33 for Derek Evans. The one yard touchdown plunge has put Carson Newman in front nine to nothing. Nothing with 327 to go in the first quarter. Play fake for Jimmy Azua on first and 10, throwing the long ball. That's up for grabs and intercepted by Desmond Farrell along the right sideline. Farrell seizes the pick on the pass intended for Craig Rucker. Flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage. 7 Eagles lead. Evans takes on second and four. Gives on the trap or dive to Dindy left side. Dindy breaks free into the secondary. He's in the Mars Hill territory. Across the 40 and 30 and up ended along the left sideline. Down at the 26 yard line. Troy Dindy flips fields. Chased down by Rice and Giles. And the Eagles in business at the Mars Hill 27. So Kraft has been good from 50 today. He'll try this one from 42. Snap is back. Udy's hold is down. Kraft's kick has tons of leg. That ball cleared in motion to the short side left. Toss to the right side for Dindy. Dindy with explosion across the 25 and 20. First down yardage inside the 15 right sideline. And blasted down by Fitzpatrick at the 10 along the right sideline. 21 yards for Troy Dindy. His second. 20 plus yard rush of the day and the Eagles have it Jackson and Wimbush split backs behind Evans two wide set McCare of the tight end right Evans takes lead to the right side for Jackson Jackson piles his way for six touchdown Carson Newman Sharon Jackson his third rushing touchdown this season and all right, those are the first half highlights with the Eagles up 20 to 7 at the halftime break over the Mars Hill Lions. Mike Turner, a uh, good first half. What was your message in the halftime locker room? Just make sure we're being us, okay? And just remind kids uh, what they're in control of. They're in control of how hard they play. They're in control of how we play together. And that's it. And that's good enough, you know? We're a good enough football team to execute and take care of things. We, we're not in control of flags that go, we're not in control of this and that, but we are in control of how we play together and how we play as a football team. And I think in the second half, we did, we did a pretty good job of that. One thing that you're not really in control of is the external game day environment, but it was certainly on your side uh, yes. Saturday. Uh, looked across the way from the press box and it was a sea of orange and blue uh, behind your bench. And I dare say that probably Carson Newman's faithful uh, at least equaled or outnumbered uh, the right. Mars Hill fans in attendance. What'd that mean to have that crowd? The band was there, the cheerleaders right. were there. You had a, it felt like a home game environment. Oh, it was, it was, uh, it was just great to have the kids run on the field and there with the cheerleaders lined up and uh, gosh, Pat Bivens and the band playing the, the fight song and and then the, st the stands were crowded and, you know, with family and fans and alums and those kind of things, it, it was awesome. and. And I really want to thank all those people, you know, uh, uh, Christy and, and, and Pat for what they did, all the kids that made an effort to get over there and our fans and family. Uh, man, it, it, was a, it was a home game atmosphere. It really was on that sideline over there. How much of a difference did that make that you really weren't, didn't have to deal with the hostile territory and, and had the warm welcome behind you? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, you, you, you want your kids focused no matter where you are. And you always prepare to be in a hostile environment, uh, but I, but I think the the reception coming on the field, the atmosphere during the game, and all that it was uh, in our favor, and and I and I really appreciate all those folks' effort to get over there and be a part of that. Carson Newman gets the job done over the Mars Hill Lions, 48 to 21. We break down the second half after these messages on the Mike Turner Show. When I was trying to decide where to go to college, I had a list of schools that I just didn't think I could afford. And to be honest, Carson Newman University was on that list. But boy, was I wrong. Between scholarships, state and federal grants, and funding directly from Carson Newman, I can afford a world-class education. And I'm getting that education at Carson Newman University. Learn more at cn.edu. 
Back on the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman picks up a 48-21 to win over the Mars Hill Lions. I'm Adam Cavalier, the voice of the Eagles, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. Mike, a second half where uh, certainly you leave no doubt. You score 21 in the third quarter, uh, fourth time this season, where you put up 21 points in a, in a quarter. Uh, obviously scored three times uh, out of the four times that you touched the ball in that frame. Uh, just how, was, how important was it in a game like this, uh, where there are playoff implications that you finish as strongly as you did. Oh, I think it's very, very important. And, you know, we're, you're playing an explosive team, and we're two scores ahead of Mars Hill at halftime, and that game's not over, no question. It's it's still a ball game with, with Craig Rucker. <laughs> and uh, so we wanted that we go out and, and uh, you know, I've always believed that uh, you, you put yourself in a position to have the scoreboard in your face in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And the wind was blowing, and so we, we took the win. Uh, and that proved to be very, very positive on our part. Uh, it's important how you start it, uh, how you start the first half, try to score points. You start the third quarter, you want to score points. And our kids did that. They played well on defense, on offense, and their kicking team. And gosh, uh, every time we kicked it in the third quarter, it was a touchback. Yeah. Uh, Nate Kraft, that seems to be his method of operation. Just put it in the end zone or... Uh, put it through the uprights and having a season, Kurt Duncan-esque, oh, yes. uh, two kicks longer than 40 yards, you bring up the wind. Really the first time that you've seen a nice swirling wind yes. this year, but it did not affect Nate Kraft. What have you seen out of the poise from your freshman kicker? Well, he's, he's amazing in that part. He really is. And, uh, you know, he just needs to stay calm and be relaxed and, uh, and be Nate and do what he does best, and he's very proficient. Uh, and doing his chores. He's very proficient in that. Uh, had some things dialed up in the passing game that uh, you'd probably like back. Had Braxton Westfield for, I think it was an 82-yard screen pass that right. got negated due to holding. Had Trevor McCarrive, uh dialed up on a play action on a pass that was dropped. What do you have to do to iron out some of those wrinkles? Well, you know, we, we had run the screen uh, to the twin receiver side one time earlier, and you know, it had been very effective. Got us a big first down. That was a drive that we ended up scoring on. And we wanted to come back to that, and, and we did. And, uh, you know, you, when you put kids out in open space, that's a tough thing to do. You got to go block people that are a whole lot more fit, athletic than you are. Uh, but our kids played hard. They didn't let that get them down. You know, you learn from that. You come back. You execute better the next time. Carson Newman gets the job done over the Mars Hill Lions, 48-21. to 21. We take a look at the second half highlights. Handle it. Third and 10 Lions, right hash at the Carson Newman 17. Urzua back to pass, throws over the middle of the field. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Carson Newman on a tunnel screen at the 20-yard line. Demarcus Jones with the INT. Behind Evans, waters the lone man to the short side right. Evans takes. He throws a screen, left side, complete to Romain Kelly. Hop, step left, shakes one man, he's at the 20. Buckles another one, past the 15. Kelly rolling his way down the left sideline. And Robert Joe saves the touchdown inside the 10, down at the seven yard line. Singular, making some noise. Evans takes, trap again, left side, Wimbush. Wimbush stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He pushes the pile forward, touchdown, Carson Newman. Rushing touchdown number 34 on the career for Antonio Wimbush. From one yard away, he scores off left tackle, and the Eagles have a 26-7 lead with 11.20 to play in the third strikes quarter. From 33 yards away for his second rushing touchdown of the day. Fox, a short kick, will come down at the 30 to Zach Webster. He heads left to the left sideline. Webster looking for a scene. He has it. He's across the 45 and 50. Zach Webster into Mars Hill territory and knocked down out of bounds. Deep in line territory down at the 35 yard line. The Lions kick it short to the left or to the right part of me and Zach Webb's quarterback sneak. Evans get the put, gets the push from behind and Evans is in. Touchdown. Carson Newman. Derek Evans, a one-yard quarterback keeper. Eagles get their fourth rushing. Five yard line. Trips go to the right. Urzua, back to pass, faces a four-man rush, steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle of the field. That's complete to Rucker at the 40. Rucker moving around before he's stripped by Desmond Farrell, and it's picked up by Darius Williams. Desmond Farrell again. 
eating Craig Rucker's lunch, turns over the Lions as Darius Williams picks up the fumble. He's stopped at the 38-yard line. Evans on second goal, takes, trap, left side, Wimbush, Wimbush, powers his way, touchdown, Carson Newman. Wimbush around left guard, he has 35 rushing touchdowns in his career. A one-yard score for Wimbo, 40 to 14, Eagles dominating, 446 to play in the third quarter. He's leading. Five wide set again for Urzua, takes the snap on first and 10 from the Eagle 20. Back to pass, throws right, that is Caught, picked off by the Eagles. Ray Arterbridge seizes it. He was aiming for Harvison, was Urzua down at the eight, but Arterbridge steps in front of it. And it is the third pick of the day, the fourth turnover of the day, generated by Carson Newman's defense down at the, the Eagles' own eight yard line. I have to say, Eagles haven't missed Bimbry a ton. Urzua takes the snap. Play fake, he's rolling right side, he's swallowed up and sacked. Caleb Goins, not fooled by the play fake, slings him down for a loss, back in Mars Hill territory at the 44. Minus eight on the play, second time Urzua has been sacked today. Those are the second half highlights as Carson Newman gets a signature road win over the Mars Hill Lions, 48 to 21. When we come back, it'll be time for the Eagles spotlight. That's after these messages on the Mike Turner Show. Back on the Mike Turner Show, Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. Time now for our Eagles Spotlight. And this week, Mark Mausner shines it on sophomore wide receiver Romaine Kelly. Romaine Kelly is second on the Carson Newman football team in catches, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. But it's the intangibles, the things that don't show up in the box score, that make Kelly a truly great player. Over the middle of the field for Romaine Kelly, a sensational one-handed, left-handed catch at the 30. Despite Romaine Kelly's early success, the sophomore would be the first to tell you what he needs to improve on. I realized there was a lot of things I could work on. Um, route running, um, you know, finishing uh, through catches, uh, make every play count, um, understanding not only what I have to do, in my position, but understanding how the old lineman is going to block on this play. Um, more so when it comes time to block, is the play is developed for the running back to catch the pitch outside, or is it developed for him to catch the, uh, get the dive going inside. While he may be too humble to talk himself up, his play on the field speaks for itself. He is so smooth with uh, the way he moves and the way he runs routes. It is, you know, the, I, told, I told Coach Parsons, uh, I told him yesterday, Romaine had just ran kind of a series of three routes and three longer routes where he was out of breath. And by the, on the third one, he had run, you know, probably, a, he'd probably run 30 yards, 40 yards, jogged back every time and went one, two, three, and he ran a, a little 12 yard curl. And I said, man, I mean, he is so pretty to watch because it's just so smooth and it's just so nice. And it's, you know, it's pleasing to the eye to watch him run routes. Fellow wide receiver Braxton Westfield is another Eagle who sees greatness in Kelly. Coach called a formation where me and Braxton are usually aligned on the same side. And um, before the play happened, he looked at me, he was like, this is your time. And um, as the play continued to develop, I ran the route. Uh, I saw that I had the, the DB beat. In my mind, I was, lit. I was not getting beat in that moment. I had to make that touchdown. And um, when, we got, when I got up, you know, first person I celebrated was, uh, was Braxton because uh, he told me my time was coming and he was right about that. Uh, and then something that he does uh, 
very underrated, is he blocks downfield for his teammates. And that is something that in our offense is a big deal, but it is something that he is not ever going to get credit for. It's not ever going to show up in a stat book. It's not going to show up anywhere. Um, but his running backs appreciate it. His quarterback appreciates it. Uh, the big guys up front, you know, they appreciate it when they see it. And he does that um, probably better than anybody on this football team. I no longer play this game for myself. Um, I play this game for my family, you know, uh, for my friends, you know, teammates. I play for other people instead of me. And I feel like when you do that, uh, football becomes more than just a sport. Uh, it becomes something you love to do. While Kelly does have dreams of playing in the NFL, he also plans to use his college degree to improve the lives of others off the field. My engineering degree, uh, I just don't want to, you know, go out and start my own business with it. I want to, you know, give back, uh, build homeless shelters for like uh, homeless people, you know, clean up the streets. Um, uh, times like this with bad weather, you know, I understand the conditions and stuff they're going through. But um, that's basically what I want to do in my engineering degree, just give back, but not more so myself. With his future plans in mind, Kelly is just taking his growth one day at a time. I don't ever want the love of the game to go away, but eventually I know it, it will go away. But uh, right now, I want to just have fun with it, you know, and continue to uh, develop more, you know, friendships um, and more love for the game than I have now. For the Eagle Sports Network, I'm Mark Mausner. All right, thank you very much, Mark Mausner, Mike Turner, Romaine Kelly. Uh, what a selfless player, a player that is capable of making big plays uh, and continues to, to grow and mature is uh, a member of your wide receiving core. Romaine's a special young man, and that's when we recruited him out of Spartanburg. And, and uh, you can tell what kind of kid he is by the people down there that supported him at the school and in the school system and how, how much they wanted to help him get lined up to go to school and, and be at Carson Newman, how excited they were and how they've supported him through the school themselves. And uh, Romaine's a special young man, very, very proud of him and, and all that he does. He works hard every day and you can count on him uh, coming in and, and being a positive factor in your group. He's an elite uh, pass catcher. But obviously if you're playing in this offense, you gotta know how to block and both he and Braxton Westfield uh, especially Saturday, m numerous times where they're driving their uh, defensive backs 10 to 15 yards downfield. Yes, very, very selfless players. And, uh, you know, I, I keep getting more and more of getting the ball to them, get the ball to them, and that's what I want to do. And, uh, you know, but you got to take what they're giving you. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you want to spread that thing around as best you can, but at the end of the day, you got to win the football game. It's hard, isn't it? I mean, you've got so many offensive weapons that you uh, have at your disposal between Derek Evans, Braxton, Romain, Corey Waters, uh, Antonio Wimbush, Troy Dindy, Trevor McCara, uh, Dimitri Salisbury, Toot Johnson, Marcus Williams. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, the talent that you have uh, to get touches. Yes, and it's not hard, it's just a blessing. <laughs> And uh, we're very, very grateful to have all those young men as part of us. Uh, turn your attention to the second game of your lone uh, road trips of the season. Uh, you head to the Limestone uh, Saints and the reservation in Gaffney, uh, South Carolina. Again, that game has been changed from a 4 o'clock kick. That is now a 1 o'clock kick uh, from Gaffney, South Carolina. What do you have to do for, to get ready for a Saints team? Uh, that has trended upward as the season has progressed. Yeah, yes, they have, and uh, you know they they can be an explosive football team as well. Uh, they're very talented at running back and at receiver, and their quarterbacks uh, uh, being very proficient and getting the football in the right place at the right time. And uh, their defense has come on strong in the last couple of weeks, uh, and so we've got to be ready to go play. No, nobody's going to give Carson Newman anything. We've got to go earn everything we get. There's no question about it. Uh, I hope we've learned that in our hearts and in our minds as, as football team that we've got to go earn what we get and, and just make sure we're not giving anybody anything else. Mike Turner, pleasure as always. We'll talk to you next week after the game with the Saints. Adam, thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate it. That's Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Turner Show. Thanks for watching.